My name is Scott Carmichael, former ProDream USA client. Um, went to America for university from 2007, graduated in 2011. Um, yeah, basically played golf competitively since I was 12, but yeah, much younger than that before. Sort of, sort of picked up a club when I was probably like five or six, and but yeah, really started playing when I was about 12, and sort of kicked on from then really. And since graduating, been in golf. Stop playing, been back in golf and now back in the golf industry caddying on tour, which is great fun. Okay, Scott, yeah, if you could just start by telling us how you first got involved in golf and what, what was it about the sport that you love so much? Fantastic. So, yeah, my uh, dad was a very, well, is a very keen golfer. Um, he got me into it at a pretty young age. I'm, yeah, like five or six probably, maybe even younger, when I first picked up a club. And then it was when I was 12 years old when I joined Barberton. Um, that's when I really got into it and, you know, spending all, all day in your summer holidays, playing two, three rounds of golf a day, playing junior opens across the Lothians and um, yeah, it was just really that and just, just loved the competition and just being outdoors and just, it was fantastic, just loved it as a kid, absolutely loved it. And that competitive element, what was it so much that you enjoyed the kind of buzz of being part of competition? Yeah, just the fact that it always matters, um, you're always playing for something, whether it was your handicap, whether it was a competition just always playing for something um, and just that individual aspect of it as well it's you and only you you're not relying on anybody else and you've got to really just stand up and be counted for really okay and you touched on the fact that you got into the game um, at quite a young age growing up who were your idols both kind of in the global golfing scene but also within the Scottish golf scene um, so so obviously when Tiger won the Masters in 97 I was nine so prior to that, obviously, I remember going to the Open in 95, watching John Daly win the Open in 95 and going to the Open in 97 when I think it was Justin Leonard won that Open. So obviously watching that, but again, it was so different back then. It wasn't as available on your TV as it is now. Um, so then basically when Tiger, the Tiger boom happened, just Tiger really just absolutely brilliant to watch. And it's what he's done for the game is just, like nothing else. Um, and the Scottish side of things, yeah, I guess obviously Monte absolutely ruled the ruled the golfing world when I was growing up as well. He was winning Order of Merits every year and um, yeah, that's pretty much it, I think, yeah. So growing up um, as a junior at your home club, what was the support that you got there like and the development for you? Yeah, it was it was good. Um, we had a really strong junior setup um, and a, a very, very strong junior setup. We had Paul Ferrier, who obviously won the Scottish Boys 10 years ago, he was a year younger than me. So he was obviously, that was really good having him. And uh, another friend, Neil Fennick, who's playing professional golf on Euro Pro. So we were all about the same age and there was other guys as well. I mean, I think we had about eight guys off four or five less when we were juniors. So for that just competitiveness, it was fantastic. You know, when you're always just trying to beat each other and you hear of other guys at other clubs where they were like the only sort of good juniors and that was never a problem for us and it was it was a lot of fun and yeah extremely competitive at times. And growing up in that competitive environment at what point did you decide that America was potentially going to be an option for you and, and how did that decision come about? Um, so I left I left school halfway through sixth year um, on the thought process, I didn't want to go to university in the UK, but I knew I could go to university in the States. Um, I'd, I'd done a bit of research, but not massively into it. Left school, started to work at the golf shop at Dalmahoy, um, and then sort of played quite well that summer. And then that's when I sort of started the process with Pro Dream USA and sort of try, got the ball rolling to try to get over to the States. And you touch on Pro Dream USA there as, as your kind of support network. Who else was involved in? your decision-making process and, and who else did you seek advice from? Uh, so my parents, obviously, um, they were very keen probably just to get me out the door. <laughs> um, no, but they were obviously keen. They knew I would obviously help my golf and obviously the academic side of it as well. Obviously, it's always good to get a degree. And um, to be fair, actually, where I was working at Dalmahoy as well, um, my boss there at the time, I remember speaking to him about it and um, it was I was potentially going to do my PGA the PGA program over at uh, Turnbury actually, but by that time I was starting to think I can I can go and do America you know I can do that for four years 
that the PGA program is always going to be there. I can wait till I'm 22, 23 to do that when I get back. And obviously, I never did the PGA program, but I always knew that was an option. And the sort of the time frames of going to America are limited in that aspect. So yeah, decided to go to America and had a great group of people supporting me doing that. And growing up playing golf in Scotland to then being in the US, what were the main differences that you you saw in terms of golf and and in terms of lifestyle? Uh, well, golf wise. Um, the sort of low shot, the chip and runs and all that, they kind of went out the window, especially in South Florida, Bermuda grass. Uh, so I had to sort of adapt a little bit there, try to hit the ball a bit higher. Um, but the ball was obviously going further as well and it was just sort of stepping up and hitting drivers a lot more, when, more so than you do in Scotland. Um, the grass was, like I said, the Bermuda grass putting wise, I remember my first year putting was, putting stats were horrendous. But then I finally sort of got into the swing of things and started to understand how it sort of worked. And from that, from my second year onwards, actually got a lot better with the sort of conditions that Florida brought to my golf game. So quite a lot of decisions, obviously, to make, uh, whether to stay in Scotland, whether to go to America. You, you finally chose to go to the States. What made you choose the college that you went to? Uh, the sunshine. Um, I, I think my advice to anybody would be Unless you're at going to a top, top Division One school, go somewhere where you're getting the best part of a full summer all year round. Um, I think quite a lot of people don't realise, especially at 17, it's easy to not realise actually that the majority of America has a winter and a worse winter than we do in Scotland, a colder winter. So it's get somewhere in the south, south Florida, or anywhere in Florida, some of the southern states, you might have a couple of cold months, but you're getting the majority of warm weather all year round and that can only improve your game. Um, yeah, so that basically was my decision to go there was the fact that well, South Florida, Miami is, I think I could probably count on one hand the amount of cold days I actually had in the four years I was there. It was fantastic. Loved it. And you touch on the conditions there. What's it like being able to practice your golf game almost full time alongside getting an education? Um, it was yeah, it was great. It was different. It wasn't obviously something I was really used to because I'd left school and I'd worked for a bit. Um, but where my university worked quite well was that we could have two full days of classes. So we could still practice in the afternoons and then we basically had five days to ourselves to play, practice, go to tournaments. Um, so it all worked out really well and it was a good balance between, you know, golf, academic side and obviously a bit of social side as well. And what were the key differences moving out there that you maybe didn't realise before you went to America but you, as soon as you got there noticed? Uh, literally nobody understands the Scottish accent. <laughs> um, I had to even have my roommate who was from Liverpool translate for me quite a lot of the time. Um, there was, yeah, it was, it was very different in There was, culturally we're obviously quite similar, but there was a lot of things that are very different, like just the humour is very different and just sort of adapting to how just a lot of them are, especially when you're 18. I was 19 when I went, so I had obviously an extra year on me, but it was, uh, yeah, there was a few sort of culture shocks of that, but it, it, some, you just get over it and it's good fun nonetheless. And when you're away from home um, for an academic year, What's it like being away from your family, being away from your friends? Um, so the first year was very hard. I actually, um, I was homesick the first year. I remember where my university worked, we had trimesters. So for Thanksgiving, we had, I think it was nine or 10 days off. So it actually gave me the opportunity to go home after three months for Thanksgiving. I came back out for Chris, uh, came back out for a couple of weeks and then went home again for Christmas. I think that helped massively because I, I remember really, really struggling. And then even after coming back for the first summer, I was also thinking about whether to go back or not. And I'm so glad I did. I mean, you just have to, there'll be times where you feel, there'll be times where it's not like home and you just need to just really just get on with it. And because it is definitely 100% the best decision I ever made was staying out there. You got, I got my degree, had an absolute great time in the States and it's an experience you can never get anywhere else. What was a day in the life like for Scott Carmichael at college? A um, lot of golf, a little bit of academic, no, quite a lot of academic actually, and uh, 
yeah, just so, like I said earlier, my sort of university days were either, the way the schedule would work, it was either like two full days or like four, not even half days. So that worked quite well. Um, classes started quite early though. We had 7.30 classes, which was a definite shock to the system to begin with. And then, yeah, practicing. So we would, our, my coach, we had, I had the same coach for the first two and a bit years and he unfortunately passed away in the start of my junior year. But he was very organised in having us about practising and playing qualifiers and getting out to playing certain courses. Um, yeah, it, it did change. It wasn't really that set of the same sort of routine every single day because our trimesters were only 12 weeks. So that changed. And sometimes it would be practising in the morning and classes in the afternoon. Sometimes it'd be the other way around. Um, lots of golf at weekends, Thursdays, Fridays. Um, yeah, and just trying to sort of, just to sort of enjoy life over there as well, you know, especially in Miami. So before you left uh, to go to America, what did you want to get out of the, the experience and what were your hopes for, for going to America? Um, I think like anybody at that age, you know, it's to play golf, it's to improve and to sort of see where your game can be in four years time. And obviously I think everyone's goal is probably at the start of it is to try to get to the professional ranks. Um, I sort of realised after three years that wasn't going to be achievable for myself, but I, yeah, it was, that was the goal. It was to, to sort of see how good my golf could get and try to get to the professional ranks. And unfortunately that never happened, but I'm still involved with professional golf on another aspect of my life now. And I probably prefer it, I think. <laughs> and just on that, working on the European tour now as a caddy with Grant Forrest, What's that, what's that been like for, for the last few years? Oh, I love it. I've, I absolutely love my job. It's absolutely fantastic. It's, I think I've got one of the best jobs in the world. I get to travel the world 30 weeks a year, get to be involved in professional sport at its highest level with just some massive decisions that need to be made on the golf course. Some less so, obviously, but you know some very big decisions are needing to be made, and I just absolutely love it. It's such a joy to be there and to be involved in it all. And do you think your time in America has kind of helped you with that experience of being on the road and, and not always being at home? Yeah, 100%. I, I love travelling um, and especially being in America, coming back and forth and travelling to tournaments and kind of what I've got used to. And yeah, it's just, it's, it's not really a, I just, yeah, I love it. absolutely love it. How did you, how did you first of all get into, into caddying and, and what was the decision behind that? So I did a little bit of caddying when I was in the States actually, just at weekends and then a few guys who'd graduated, did a few sort of mini tour events, etc. for them. I really enjoyed it and that, by that point as well, I knew I wasn't going to be playing myself. Um, came back home and then the following summer got a opportunity to work for Chris Stoke out in Madeira for a week. So did that. Did quite had quite a good week. I think finished like 15th or 16th, and really enjoyed it. And sort of thought, right, okay, then, right, let's do this. However, I'd just been offered a job in London, so he asked me to work the next couple of weeks for him. And unfortunately, because it was only a couple of weeks, just the, how the sort of he was on the challenge show at the time, he couldn't really commit for the rest of the year. I was like, decided, decided against it, and you know, get a proper job down in London, Monday to Friday, nine to five. So did that for a couple of years. Didn't really enjoy it and came back and then started caddying at Renaissance Club. Um, so did that for two or three years. Did a few pro events, was Re really doing that to get into the pro side of things. Uh, so did tour schools, sort of some Euro pro events, Tartan tour events, um, open qualifying, etc. Um, and then, yeah, a couple of years after all that, finally got an opportunity to caddy on the Challenge Tour for a Danish guy called Mark Hastrup. Um, so did half half the challenge your season for him and um, then did a couple of weeks actually one of those weeks I worked for Grant um, in Finland on the challenge tour and then worked for Nathan Kimsey uh, for the back half of the 2017 season on the main tour which was a great experience you know I, I wasn't expecting on my first year full-time caddying to get into the European tour and to do a bit I think we did like nine events together on the main tour it was just a fantastic experience and while we didn't do very well together it was still Still just great to get out there and sort of meet all the guys and sort of really see what it's like on the top level of European golf compared to the Challenge Tour, where it's obviously just the guys who are just sort of up and coming and rising through the ranks. You're obviously you're on the bag for Grant at the moment, but you've also got other caddy and gigs that you do. Uh, yeah. Can you just talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. How, how um, so 
still do a bit of cad caddying at Renaissance, um, which is great. Just it's just a good little extra earner through the off weeks, um, and obviously next week's the Lady Scottish, so I've got a job for that. And yeah, obviously it's nice to have some time off, but it's still just shy of short, shy of half a year maybe, just less than half a year I've got off. So it's just good to keep your, yourself busy. And if I'm not caddying and I'm out trying to play play a bit of golf myself, maybe not very well, but trying to play a bit of golf myself. And you're, you're here at the, the men's arm this week playing. Um, what do you, do you still enjoy playing as much as you do caddying? Yeah, yeah, I love it. I still really enjoy playing. I uh, just enjoy being involved in the competition and just, it's just, it's great to be here. And yeah, sort of 10, 12 years on from when I was taking this extremely seriously, it's quite nice just turning up, being a bit more laid back about it all and just definitely enjoying it more than I probably did back then, that's for sure. And as a caddy, what are the key characteristics that you think you need to have? And did you develop any of those whilst you were in the States or, or grow, going through college? Um, obviously just having a sort of a key understanding of just general course management. A lot of it is experience and just sort of learning stuff every week, just learning new stuff every week because, you know, there's guys out there for 20, 25 years and you can tell how much experience that they have. Um, but yeah, it's just making sure you're just confident with what you're saying and, you know, making sure the numbers are always right and just turning up on time. You know, no one's ever been fired for being late, uh, for being early, sorry. Um, and yeah, just, just as a lot of on job experience, just learning on the job and just as each day comes and just taking it all in and learning from your past experiences. If you were to look back at your time in the US now, what would be two or three key highlights that you can remember? Um, some of the places we went to for tournaments, went to Puerto Rico two years in the trot for a tournament. That was absolutely amazing. Great tournament. Um, just the friends that you meet. I, we had quite a mixed team in terms of international students. So I've got friends all over the world, Colombia, England, Sweden, Finland, um, and obviously America and Canada as well. Um, and I got a hole in one in my last ever tournament in college as well, which was oh yeah, my last ever round, got a hole in one. So that was quite a nice highlight to finish it all off. Nice way to wrap it all Absolutely. up. Absolutely. There's a real excitement um, at the moment around Scottish players coming through from the Challenge Tour last year and the success that they've gone on to have on the European Tour this year. What's it like being in the mix with all that and, and around the Scottish guys on tour? Yeah, it's, it's fantastic. Um, so I've, I carried for Grant last year on the Challenge Tour as well. So I was obviously involved with Grant's golf obviously last year, but obviously the other Scottish guys coming through. And, you know, one week we would have a good week and then the following week another Scottish guy would be Davey or Bob or someone, you know, just each week, just every single week there would be another Scottish player at the top of the leaderboard. And I think everyone just fed off each other's success. It was just fantastic to watch. and. Even this year on the Challenge Tour, well, I'm obviously only watching it on the leaderboards, but you've, you know, you've got Callum winning, you've got Ewan Ferguson doing well, Connor won at the start of the year. Um, it's just absolutely fantastic for Scottish golf. And it, yeah, it's another real upward trend for Scottish golf just now. And it's very exciting to see what the next five to 10 years is going to be like. And I have to imagine there'll be a few kicking around that top 100 and top 50, no doubt about it. Okay, and going back to your, your time in the US, if someone was watching this video right now, they're just finished high school, they're thinking about going to America, they're not sure whether they're gonna do it, what would be your one word or your one piece of advice for them? Do it, just 100% do it. For all the doubt, and yeah, it's just a very scary thing, especially at 17, 18 years old, uh, it's a scary prospect going out to the States by yourself, not knowing anybody, but just go out of your comfort zones because you're only gonna get be a better person from it. You're gonna learn so much and you're going to meet so many amazing people. Your golf should get better, but if it doesn't, you've also got the academic side of it. I mean, even before my caddying, I worked in London and I worked in sales. I did recruitment and I sold office space. And I definitely think being in America definitely helped because they're looking at your, they're looking at hundreds of CVs. Oh, you went to university in America. It's just so different. Nobody else. So you, you immediately jump off the page compared to the other guys you're against, guys and girls you're against when you're going for jobs. Um, that's if you choose a career out of golf, that is obviously.